topic we have for today is reinventing human resource management with machine learning. So I understand that AI and ML has been around for long, but a lot of companies are, have been using it. And they're also now exploring new avenues such as HR to employ it. So very briefly, what is machine learning? Yeah, that's a great question. So machine learning is uh, simply the latest iteration in the effort to create um, artificial intelligence, yeah? So artificial intelligence can be seen as a, a field, let's say, as an effort to recreate intelligence uh, within a machine, within a computer. Yeah, or, you know, it might not be a computer in the future, it might be some kind of other machine. And um, machine learning uh, differentiated itself from previous approaches because it is data driven. Uh, so in order to answer this question completely, we'd have to go a bit deep on the history of, of AI. Um, but uh, essentially machine learning turns the problem onto, uh, you know, onto its head. So um, it, uh, instead of before the creation of machine learning, AI researchers were trying to come up with some kind of master algorithm, let's say, to create intelligence. But machine learning is, tries to do this by using data. And everything came together when the internet and cloud computing and all that technologies uh, were invented because this approach of using data to create intelligence suddenly became very, very effective simply because we had so much data and so much computing power. Right. And what exactly is the difference between AI, ML, and digital assistants when it comes to using them in a business function? Yeah, so I'd say that um, everyone's using the word AI these days, uh, but in reality, what we are calling AI is uh, usually, usually consists of one or more machine learning algorithms working together. Right. Yeah? And so uh, the, the digital assistants, are, I would say that they're just an application of AI and machine learning. Yeah. Uh, so they're not really, so it, it, whereas AI, so AI can be seen as the wider effort. Yeah, so we can say that AI is the bigger field. Machine learning uh, is a particular approach to AI and digital assistants are simply an application. Yeah, so digital assistants are using machine learning. Right, and in our last conversation, we went over like five key areas, how AI can actually help a business scale up. So, and since we're like halfway through 2020 and all, what do you think have been the areas where most businesses globally have been utilizing AI and ML so far in the decade? Uh, in a argument or in general? In general, like what are the more uh, like the more prominent industries that have actively been using AI ML? Yeah, so it really depends on the industry, really, because these are tools, and there are so many applications for these tools. Um, so it really comes down to what, um, you know, different businesses want to do, right? So um, this can be you know, a very long conversation, but to give you some examples, I think forecasting demand is a very successful application or forecasting in general. So in finance, professionals want to forecast prices uh, in, um, in, in, in other settings, like in, let's say, retail, they want to forecast demand. Yeah. Um, but uh, th there are many other applications like personalization, I think is another big one. Uh, now, that, now that we're talking about it, like for example, Netflix has a recommender system, Amazon has a recommender system, so recommendation and personalization in general. That's that where they, AI comes in. Yeah, yeah, and then you have functions within businesses, right? So right. we mentioned HR, uh, so that's one, but also in marketing. Um, it really depends, you know, on the business. Yes, and so I wanted to explore more how it's being used in the field of HR these days. It's something that I believe it's, is a bit underexplored at the moment, but something that's gaining more and more attention. So what are some of the ways machine learning in particular is being used in human resource functions? Yeah, well, there are quite a few uses, right? Um, so the obvious way is to use HR in order to in order to use machine learning in HR in order to screen CVs and candidates. Uh, so this makes a very good sense, yeah. Uh, then uh, I think I've seen some uses of AI and machine learning in, in HR within the context of training employees, yeah, and personalizing training, um, which, uh, you know, 
now we're talking about HR, but obviously that's a more general theme within education and how AI can help with, with education. So how but, exactly would they personalize trainings? Yeah, well, uh, think about it. When you go to school, you have some subjects which you might like, some subjects which you might not like, some examples which work better for you, so yeah. some other sub examples which maybe didn't work that great. Uh, using machine learning, you can create a, a customized curriculum which works the best for, um, for an individual, right? So this can speed up learning significantly. Uh, we're still at the early stages of, of doing this kind of thing, but I believe that this is going to become more and more popular. Right. This approach, I mean, yeah. And what about as when it comes to like employee engagement and using the workforce data and analytics? That is something that machine learning, I believe, is really revolutionizing. It's really established, sorry, in what? The, like when it comes to using the workforce data and mm -hmm. seeing the analytics and everything, I believe that that's one area where machine learning is really proving to be transformative. Would you agree? Yeah, with yeah it's, it's like enhanced, um, you know, business intelligence, right? So it's, um, so m m machine learning uh, has basically taken analytics to a whole new level. Um, so now we can, um, we can focus more on predictive applications instead of just, um, you know, describing data, you know, instead of just exploring data. So I think this, this has been a big paradigm shift, right? Right. And what happens when this is, I think this is something that also worries businesses and, and like as managers and then employees as well. What happens when machines become smarter than us? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, there are some, you know, philosophers which have pondered over this question and a theory I particularly like, I'm not saying that's a theory I endorse, but I found it fascinating, is, it, um, is the theory of super intelligences. So the theory says that if we create a machine that's smarter than us, uh, then this machine would probably be able to create other machines which yeah. are smarter than itself until we reach some kind of limit of intelligence. Uh, and uh, this would be a singularity point because we don't know what would happen after this, which is very, a, a very interesting theory. I'm not sure if it's true. I'm not sure what's going to happen, uh, but I guess it's probably the best we have right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And where, so where do you think like we're headed with all of this? Like all of these advancements are barely coming on very rapidly. Do you think that like startups in the HR space do have the capacity to kind of utilize these technologies as they come along? Yeah, I think now these technologies are more accessible than ever because we have many open source tools, many libraries. So it's much easier to use uh, all these tools than it was, let's say, 10 years ago. So you, you don't have to develop something from scratch, yeah? Okay. Uh, so I think that's a very positive direction. So startups, even individuals, can, can easily use this tool. Right. And there's also a concern that an over-reliance on AI can reduce the human touch of human resources. Do you think that is something to be worried about? Um, well... I think that AI is going to affect many, many professions, including human resources professionals. Um, so I'd say that in general, it's good to discuss about this, right? Because um, it might replace some jobs, but on the grand scheme of things, I, I believe it's going to make many jobs more um, effective, let's say, you know, more, more effective, more efficient. Um, it's going to add lots of value in, in companies. Um, so, but, but, but yeah, there's a possibility that some people might be replaced by machines and might have, might need to work in different roles. Right. And then going forward, how can we make AI ML more safer and simpler to use in HR functions specifically? Because yeah, I, I think that, that, that like uh, human resources, right? That's like the essence of the company, the culture and the organ. Everything is built upon what HR the team stands for. So, how do you think? HR team in particular can utilize this technology to their advantage. Yeah, so I think that this is not only for HR. I think in, in general, the big question is how can we make um, how can we make AI machine learning more accessible to everyone, to every business function? And I think right now is um, maybe machine learning is still is, is more accessible than it used to be, but it's not as accessible as it could be. 
And I think maybe platforms like no code, low code platforms, etc., might play a huge role in this. You know, like being able to create a solution, an AI solution, without having to code anything. Uh, so maybe this is where things are moving towards. So can you elaborate a bit more on how you think it could be made more accessible? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking basically about the use of platforms which do not require code in order to um, develop solutions, yeah. Um, so because right now, if you want to develop a, a machine learning solution, you probably have to code it, yeah, we probably have to hire a team to do that for you. Uh, so I believe that this um, layer will be abstracted. So maybe a company will be able to develop an AI solution without hiring a data scientist. Maybe they'll be able to simply develop it using, um, you know, maybe they'll be able to develop it simply using some tool, let's say. And I know the big companies like Microsoft, IBM, they, they, they've been pushing towards that direction. They, they try to come up with tools. Um, and, you know, it doesn't matter whether we're talking about HR or other functions within a company. Um, I think these tools will be general purpose tools. So they can be used within, you know, for any division within a company. Okay. And then do you think that like managers in particular should have like AI training centers as part of their company? Uh, not really. Uh, I think that uh, even AI is, you know, everyone's witnessing the disruption that AI is bringing. I'm, I don't think that most companies are active, are very active in educating, you know, <laughs> the personnel around this. That's why I think it's important to, that's why I think it's important um, to push educational initiatives. That's why I um, you know, I've worked on things like my book, mm -hmm. uh, I'm running workshops, uh, because many times I've spoken to CEOs or managers in organizations and usually hear the same questions again and again, which makes me believe that uh, many, many executives, many decision makers are still not as informed as they should be about AI, its like ability, to share some of the questions that you're asked. Sorry? So you mentioned that you hear the same questions over and over. Would you like to share some of them with our audience? Yeah, sure. So one very one thing I'm asked very often, and it's, it's a quite generic question of, you know, I have this data, what can I do with it, right? And it's clear that many many executives have no clue what AI can 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 really do for them. You know, they just have a, a loose impression. You know, so that's one. Then it's about hiring. Like, when should I hire a team? How many people do I need to hire? What yeah. profile do these people have? You know, so I'd say these are the two most common ones that open, um, you know, come to my head. Okay. And then as a data scientist yourself, I believe that you give them like really hopeful answers. Is that right? Uh, yeah. So I think that um, in order to properly answer these questions, you need to take things from the beginning. So you need to really... Um, first of all, demystify the jargon in the field, uh, the various terms that are being used, um, explain a few things about the history of AI, which for some people might sound boring. Like, why would you care about the history of, a, of AI or a field? But I think it's we need very to examine... important for us to understand the history, right? If we are to like, use it and keep on using it. Yes, exactly. And understanding the history also helps us understand the limitations, but also where the future is heading towards. Too. You know, all these bits, which are very, very important. Yeah. So where exactly do you think that we are heading with these? What is the future look like? I'm not talking like, let's say, 10 years, but just like five years down the road. Where do you see these technologies going? Uh, and what, what I think we're going to see is more adoption on a wider scale. Yeah, so that's one. Uh, secondly, I believe uh, increments in performance, right? So we're going to have um, models, for example, which can generate language and they'll, they, you know, they'll be on a human level performance. And third, they will become more accessible. You know, they'll become more accessible. So I think uh, AI is going to become more pervasive in all aspects of society and economy. Right. All right. Thank you so much for your time and your insights. Yep, thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure speaking to you.